In this video, we will solve stress problems. In the first problem, we have an element AB connected with the rod BC in point B, and both elements are supported with pins on the walls. In point A, the pin is double-sided, so the shear load is carried by two sections, but in point B, the connection is only one-sided. The pin materials have an allowed shear stress of 90 megapascals, and for this rod, the Materials tensile allowable stress is given as 115 megapascals. Well, the question is, well, determine the smallest diameters of the pins here and here, and the diameter of the rod CB, so that the load is supported within the given allowed shear and tensile stress levels. The first thing we do is we have to write the equilibrium equations and find the support forces. So if you take element AB and draw the free body diagram, then you have a support force in B, which is in the direction of the rod and in point a, a, you have a support load with Y and X components. So you have three unknowns, and you can write the three equilibrium equations, which you know from statics, sigma Fx, sigma Fy, and M, sigma M equals to zero, and find these support forces. We will not go into detail since we are dealing with stresses in this video. So we know the forces. The next step is to calculate the pin diameters. The force is 568. So it is in point in pin A. It is supported double-sided, each side 2.84 and we know that the shear stress is given as V over A. If I want to find the area, then I can write it like this. So you know the shear force, the allowed shear stress. And for this case, the necessary area can be calculated with the help of this formula. Well, force, Allowed shear stress, 90 was in megapascals, converted to kilopascals. So the result is that 31, 10 to the 6 meters square. And since the area is a circular area, well, it's pi d square over 4. And with the help of this equation, you, you can determine the minimum diameter as 6.3 in order to support the load within the given allowed shear stress limits. The same you can do for point B. For point B, force allowed shear stress the same, but as you see, the force is not divided. Why? Because it's only a single-sided pin connection. So we directly take 667 and find the area. This should be equal to pi d square over 4. Here the pin should be 9.7 millimeter diameter. So since we're going to buy these pins, we take the millimeter, the next millimeter level. level. Well, for a 7 millimeter pin for B, 10 millimeter pin will be necessary. Next, the diameter of the rod. Well, we know the rod is BC. The force is 667. Now, 
it's on the tensile loads. So we take the allowed tensile stress, determine the area, and for this area, the diameter of the rod should be 8.59. So the next millimeter level is nine millimeters. So we actually made a very, very simple design. The load and the geometry was given well. The, the materials were also given. We were asked to, to, to determine some di dimensions. Here the pin diameter, here the rod diameters, and with the help of our calculations, we finished this simple design. Here we have a bicycle. Well, we know that the bicycle is braked with the help of a cable. Well, this is the tension force acting on the cable. Here we have the length of the cable. This force is applied with this handle. Here I apply a force P, which is actually a distributed brake pressure, but instead I put a force P in the middle of this distributed force and P is 70 Newton. Okay, the length of the brake cable is given. The section is also given. And during the brake, the cable elongates by 0.214 millimeter. The question is, find the stress and the strain in the brake cable. Well, the first thing we do is we apply the equilibrium and the brake handle. This is my support pin. And here I have a force, tension force, trying to rotate like this. The moment arm is 37.5. So if you take the sum of the moments about A, the tension in the cable applies a moment 37.5 times T, tension force. And this force, we can calculate this moment arm 50 and that's 25 it's 75 times p so this equation gives me the relation between the tensile and the cable and the applied p we know that p is 70 the tensile force in the cable is 150 newtons next step is very easy the stress in the cable force divided by the area 150 the area is also given the tensile stress in the cable is 103 and the strain we know the elongation it's 0.214 divided by the initial length of the cable gives you epsilon next problem here we have a funicular and the car when it's fully loaded with people weights 130 kilonewtons well we have a cable pulling uh, this car and the cross-sectional area of the cable is 490 millimeters square. Find the stress in the cable if the angle is 30 degrees. This angle is 30 degrees. Okay, first pre-body diagram. Forces acting on the cable, on the car. Weight, support forces, support forces on both wheels. And here we have the tension in the cable. Weight, tension, angle. And what we do is to write the equilibrium diagram. 
we write the equilibrium in this plane. That means equilibrium in the inclined direction. Here we have this force. Here we have the component of W. These two support forces don't have any components in that direction. So T minus W sine alpha is equal to zero. And the tensile stress in the cable, when you find T as W sine alpha, sigma is force divided by the area. And here you have the equation. So all you have to do is put the numerical values. And if you put the numerical values considering the units, you find that the cable is under a tensile stress of 133 megapascals. Okay, in this video, we have solved some simple stress problems. Thank you for listening.